Okay, everything wrong with a Ford BT Cummins. Not a whole lot, but you're probably not gonna like what I have to say about them. All right, so this thing weighs 750 pounds and puts out 105 horsepower and 265 foot-pounds of torque stock. Now, this one has a fuel pin in it and a governor spring in it, a little bit of work to the AFC on the top of the pump. So it woke it up a little bit, but that's about it. The HE351W, I think is what that turbo is, let it spool a little quicker at the bottom end, which made it a lot more uh, drivable. But for the price of them, that's not much. Uh, rebuilt one I'm seeing online for over $10,000. So I had this engine in a 2004 Tahoe for my wife. I put about 80,000 kilometers on it. I'm super happy that I did it because it cut my fuel consumption in about half over the 5.3. Since we started the channel though, um, our community has grown a lot more and my eyes have been open to a lot other different engines that would probably be better suited. Problem is in North America, we're so limited to the amount of diesels that were actually put in on-road vehicles. I'm happy that we did it. We started the channel almost with this engine. Not to say that if we come across another 4VT, it wouldn't buy it and maybe do something with it, but it's not the holy grail that you think it is. That out of the way, it is a very reliable engine. It's nice because it is a 6BT minus two cylinders. So front cover is entirely the same. The side mounts are all exactly the same. So even if it's in an industrial setup, you could find an old Dodge 5.9 and have the proper brackets and setups to make it easy for an on-road platform. They do suffer from the KDP. Uh, which means that you got to take the timing cover off and keep that little dowel pin and the timing cover from rattling out and destroying your front cover. They'll probably leak over an amount of time. They do vibrate more than the 5.9, so this is actually a balancer off of an 8.3. It's a little bigger, a little bit more mass, and it depends on what you have behind it, whether it's automatic or manual. If it's an automatic, the torque converter and the fluid inside the torque converter helps a little bit, as does a heavy flywheel if you're using a clutch. But when you're sitting at an idle, your coffee, those rings are in your coffee cup showing exactly how much the thing vibrates. Um, this thing had the gel mounts in it, which helps again a little bit. But if you were to get an OM606, which actually weighs less and is capable of probably four times the horsepower reliably without a whole lot of work, if you have one of those available to you, it's probably a better setup. Another downside is that it is a sleeveless engine or a parent bore block meaning that you cannot replace the sleeves in it. So if you have damage to your cylinders, you're forced to bore it over, which this one actually has, it's bored 20 thou over, meaning that you need new pistons, you need new rings, and the associated costs with that really add up after a bit. I did find that a lot of the Cummins, every time I send the head out to get decked and the valve seats checked, a lot of the valve seats crack too. So that is a bit of an issue. But other than that, that's about all you're gonna run into if you're interested in one of these 4 b for now, we are done with this one. Uh, we're done probably rebuilding 4BTs on the channel and uh, really experimenting with them. We're on to some of those European diesels, hopefully. We have an OM602 in the driver, which is a five cylinder Mercedes diesel. It also rattles like crazy, but I, it is even better on fuel than this thing is. You think your fuel gauge is broken, but it's just running on the fumes from the car in front of you. Okay, so the nice thing with the 4BT and the 6BT sharing basically everything the same minus the two cylinders is that you can take an exhaust manifold from a 5.9 and modify it to make it fit your 4BT. So if you get the industrial 6BT, the turbo hangs straight down, you can flip that over upside down because the exhaust manifold is ambidestrous and you can have your turbo sticking up high if that's the look that you're going for. If you're going for a Dodge Ram exhaust manifold, you can have it pointing on an angle to avoid your oil filter. Same way your intake plate, you can take the 5.9 and shrink it down. All you have to do is weld the side shut and then get it decked again. And that'll allow you to put the intake heater or the grid heater for easy starting in the winter from the 5.9 to the 4BT because as far as I know, the 4BTs never had the um, the intake heater. Same way you can take the pump off of whatever was on the 4BT. If it was an air compressor or, or just a blank spot, you can take the pump and the vacuum pump if you want it off of the Dodge 5.9 and stick it on the side. Originally, I always told people that you can't use the off-road 4BT in an on-road application because the governor is set up different. 
Uh, when we went on a road trip, we met a guy who put the 4BT into an old rat rod and he originally had an industrial P-pump engine on it. He said he had no problem shifting and grabbing the next gear. The only difference between the two pumps is the way the governor is set up. So he said, when you would go under a load, it would automatically rev up to try and keep that same RPM. Um, and that's as if it was on a water pump or on a generator, if you all of a sudden start loading it, the pump is told to maintain that RPM. So he said it was a little bit trippy when you were going up a hill, the truck would actually speed up on its own, kind of like cruise control, even though there was no cruise control. We've got a video on how to get a little bit more horsepower out of this engine. I imagine this one would be somewhere around 150 now with somewhere over 300 foot pounds of torque. And we achieved that by putting a fuel pin in. Um, which ramps up the fuel and um, governor spring to let a little bit more RPM in there. That is on a separate video. If it's on a P-pump, you can set up that pump the same way as a P-pump on a 5.9 by a fuel plate and messing with the aneroid, which is the amount of boost that pushes back on the rack. There's only so much fuel you can get out of these little pumps. The P-pumps are a lot more adjustable. We've got videos on getting the most fuel out of a P-pump, so check that out. One other really nice thing about the 4BT, if you are going to use it in a conversion, is that these oil pans are actually ambidextric, so you can have a front sump or a back sump. Generally, they come as a rear sump, but you can modify the pickup tube um, because the pickup actually comes from the front of the pan. So um, there's actually a spot for your dipstick on the other side for the front as well. So that, that's kind of handy, um, avoiding your axle or clearances, whatever that might be, if you're going to throw this in something. The biggest problem that I see with the 4BT Cummins is that they are overrated. For the amount of horsepower that they put out and the weight that they are, they get this glorious name that they probably don't deserve. Something comparable would be like a 4BD1T on a Zuzu engine, which is a six cylinder. A little bit less torque, but a little bit more horsepower. Weighs about the same, but is a sleeved engine. And you could probably find that a lot cheaper than the 4BT just because they're not as common or don't have the name that the Cummins does. Um, you won't be the coolest guy on the block, but you will have that extra cash to actually drive it across the country. Kind of like our friend Stoney, who took one of those Isuzus and put it in a Roadrunner, drove all across North America. There's other options, and unfortunately, we're very limited in North America by the amount of diesels available to us on an on-road platform. If you compare this to a European diesel, um, they must be watching the channel and just laughing. Going a 750 pound engine that puts out 105 horsepower, sounds like a tractor and vibrates the fillings out of your teeth. You guys are nuts. <laughs> if you can support the weight of a 4BT, um, you might be thinking about the 5 liter. The 4BT is 750 pounds. The 5 liter is 900 pounds, so an extra 150 pounds. When we're talking to Cummins, uh, they did mention that the 5 liter was supposed to be this great engine that was supposed to go in boats and Jeeps and a whole pile of different platforms unfortunately whether Nissan had the contract and wouldn't let anybody else use it or what happened there I don't really know so if you can find an old Nissan I don't know how much support there is for the five liter I think one time we wouldn't mind trying it I, we know somebody that has a few of them on engine stands that we might be able to work a deal with um, but it is an option. I just worried about the aftermarket support for it now that Nissan has decided not to do anything. When we walked through the Cummins plant, it was pretty well dead. There was a couple going down the row, but they said that they were only making two or three of them a week. A Cummins is required to supply parts and support that platform for X amount of years after they've been released, but that will come to an end sooner than later too. Okay, so the 4BT, if you find a rebuilt one, is about 10, 11 grand. Um, and for that price, you can buy a 2.8. Um, we were looking into a 2.8 and we, we did want to do a 2.8 swap, but uh, with the dollar the way it is and the issue with a $10,000 engine is that we didn't really have a good enough platform to justify a $10,000 engine. Um, so we kind of put it on the wayside, on the, on the back burner for now. I don't think we'll be doing one in the near future. Uh, from what I've heard is that they're decent engines. Uh, parts are hard to get. So we met uh, Alex from Billet Performance Manufacturing at SEMA one year, and he's actually in the other end of Canada in BC, but he makes uh, adapters for pretty well any engine that you need. So whether it is the 4BT or the Isuzu 4BDT or whatever your little heart uh, can imagine, 
um, he can make adapters to make it work. Most of the bell housings in that are online now. Um, so we'll be getting some adapters from him as well. He also made the wiring harness for the Duramax. Um, he specializes in coming swaps, mainly the 6.7s actually, believe it or not, into the Power Stroke platform, ripping out the 6.0s and the 6.4s. If you sign up on our website as a builder, you can also get discounts uh, through our website to anything that he sells. So if you're building a car or vehicle, definitely go check that out. If I miss something, um, definitely comment down below. And I wanna know what your guys' favorite diesels are. Uh, what would be your number one pick in installing in something? And if you have an OM606, comment down below because at some point we would like to get our hands on one of those. So, thanks for watching. Um, remember, check out the entire Tahoe series. It's an interesting watch. Um, short lived for the Tahoe, unfortunately, because we live in the Salt Belt. Don't buy your vehicles from the Rust Belt. Go down south, enjoy the road trip, and uh, yeah, build it, drive it, and enjoy. Here we go.